If we think about looking at a tetrahedral carbon atom from above, we'll realize that what we see is actually a cross, something that kind of looks almost square planar if you don't think too much about the three-dimensionality. This is the basis of a way of representing tetrahedral carbon known as the Fischer projection, and it's a bit of an old-school approach prior to the ability to easily draw and print wedges and dashes, but nonetheless, it's a reliable way to represent tetrahedral carbon even when we need to specify three-dimensional information, for example, at stereocenters or for chiral compounds. The Fischer projection is based on looking down on tetrahedral carbon from above. So for example, in this model, to assume the Fischer projection viewpoint, we would look down from this direction and we'd pick one of the four groups to be sort of at the top. And typically for Fischer projections of biomolecules, there's some convention here which group you put at the top. When we look down from above, we see a cross. And the Fischer projection convention says, by convention, the horizontal groups are going to be pointed out towards you and the vertical groups back away from you. So notice in three dimensions, this almost looks like the molecule's horizontal substituents are sort of reaching out to hug you, right? While the head and the legs are sort of back behind. And we see this on the slide in this Fischer projection where we filled in wedges and dashes. So here, for example, we have the three-dimensional perspective with the methyl and ethyl groups back behind the screen and the OH and H groups above the screen. And typically, we don't draw the wedges and dashes. There's nothing wrong with doing that, per se. Um, but the con by convention, we just use straight sticks to represent these bonds, and there's a carbon here at the middle in the Fischer projection, and carbon is always, the tetrahedral carbon is always drawn in the middle of the Fischer projection. Now, one nice thing about Fischer projections is we can use them to quickly determine the isomeric relationships between two compounds. For example, here we have this 1,2-dibromo compound, and we have a similar looking 1,2-dibromo compound here. Now, assuming R1 and R2 are not the same, these are actually chiral compounds. If we think about this carefully in three dimensions, we can verify this. And if we compare the structures and, ref for example, reflect this structure through a mirror aligned perpendicular to the screen, we'll get this structure. This shows us that the two structures are related as mirror images. And going through our isomer process, they have the same connectivity, assuming R1 and R2 are the same in both molecules. They have the same molecular formula. They have the same connectivity. They are mirror images. Therefore, they are enantiomers. In this situation on the right, this structure is now no longer the mirror image of this structure. In fact, we can verify that by noting that this structure and this one are different. They differ in configuration at this carbon right here. That makes these two compounds diastereomers. They have the same connectivity, same molecular formula. They differ in the positions of atoms in three-dimensional space, and they are not mirror images due to this difference in configuration here but the fact that they have the same configuration at this upper stereocenter in the Fischer projection. To get familiar with Fischer projections, I think it helps to convert them into bond line structures with wedges and dashes, and think about assigning R and S to these stereogenic carbons, these tetrahedral stereocenters that often show up at the centers of Fischer projections. And we're going to do that with three different molecules on this slide, including one with great biochemical relevance. This is the amino acid serine. So, to start with this, let's talk about assigning R and S. You can do this from a Fischer projection with relative ease because of the standard conventions associated with the Fischer projection. With the horizontal H, we're going to see that this fixes the H in kind of a typical orientation that's actually the opposite of the standard for RS labeling, but we can very, very easily deal with that. So in assigning R and S, the first thing we're going to do is prioritize. So not even think in three dimensions just yet. And we prioritize using atomic number and break ties using the first point of difference idea. We get the NH2 group as priority number one, then the carboxylic acid group, then the CH2OH group, and then the hydrogen. And now we need to think about putting this in the standard orientation with that lowest priority hydrogen in the back. Now, what is this Fischer projection telling us about how the hydrogen is oriented in this structure? Well, in this structure, the hydrogen is on a horizontal bond. That implies that the hydrogen is pointed out towards you. 
In other words, the hydrogen is above the plane of the screen. And so we would draw it in three dimensions on a wedge like this, with the hydrogen closer to you than the central carbon. This is the opposite of where we want that hydrogen to be pointed back behind the plane of the screen from the perspective of the RS convention. But this is very easy to deal with. Rather than worrying about rotating around the molecule, let's just look at groups one, two, and three and see what the sense of rotation is. In this case, it's counterclockwise. But this is in the orientation with the hydrogen pointed out towards us. If we want the hydrogen back away from us, well, all we have to do is sort of flip the sense of rotation, right? Because if things look, for example, counterclockwise from this perspective with the hydrogen up, then the sense of rotation, if we flip the molecule over and put the hydrogen back, will be the opposite. So rather than assigning S, we're going to assign the R configuration because from the standard perspective behind the screen, we would see this sense of rotation as looking clockwise rather than counterclockwise. Now to draw this structure as a bond line structure, the first thing to do is to lay down two of the groups and the central carbon in the plane. And I tend to do this by taking the top group and putting it on the right and the bottom group and putting it on the left. But here you can do whatever makes the most sense to you visually. Now where will the NH2 and H end up? Well, think about this structure and what it implies about the perspective we're taking on the Fisher projection. This implies that we're looking at the Fisher projection from this side with the, o, uh, the uh, carboxylic acid group on our right and the CH2OH group on our left, as we see in this structure down here. This means that the NH2 group is going to be pointed towards us, right? Our I is essentially over here, and the H is going to be pointed back. And in fact, this leads to the conclusion that the configuration is R as well, of course, as it must. And this would be a perfectly fine way to lay down these groups, noting that we, if we want to faithfully draw this structure, this configuration needs to remain R. So this is a bond line structure for Siri. All right, what about the second case? Well, here again, we're going to prioritize first. And here, prioritization is pretty straightforward. OH is 1, aldehyde group is 2, CH3 is 3, and the H is 4. And again, we've got that H pointed outward based on the arms out to hug you are the horizontal bonds convention built into the Fisher projection. And so in assigning R and S, well, let's look at the sense of rotation and then just flip it to assign R and S, recognizing that we're going to have to flip the molecule over to put that hydrogen in the back anyway. So from this viewpoint, the sense of rotation is clockwise. But upon flipping over, this is going to look counterclockwise. And so the configuration there is S. And when we're drawing the bond line structure, well, again, what makes the most sense to me is to put the top and bottom groups in the plane. And here, I've actually done it kind of the opposite way with the aldehyde group on the left and this methyl group on the right, labeled two and three with our priority numbers. Now ask yourself, what does that tell us about what perspective we're looking at the Fisher projection from based on this picture? Well, we're looking from this way with the aldehyde on our left and the CH3 on our right. This implies that the hydroxyl group is going to come out towards us and the hydrogen back. And again, if we think about RS labeling from the bond line structure, the configuration better be S, otherwise we drew it the wrong way. And in fact, if we look at the sense of rotation 1 to 2 to 3, indeed, the configuration there is S. And now you can see why I chose this orientation, right? I chose this orientation for the in-plane sort of backbone atoms to put the lowest priority group in the back, which makes the RS assignment relatively easy. In the last case, we again have to prioritize first, we've got the hydrogen as lowest priority, hydroxyl group is number one, CH2OH is number two, and CH2CH3 is number three. That lowest priority hydrogen is still coming out, and so the apparent sense of rotation here is clockwise, but to assign RRS, we're going to flip that sense of rotation, to flip the hydrogen to the back. This makes the sense of rotation appear counterclockwise, and the configuration is thus S. And again here, we can imagine looking at the molecule from this perspective to generate the bond line structure with that hydrogen in the back. That's why I chose looking from this way, to put that hydrogen back behind the plane of the screen. The perspective we're going to have, here's the CH2OH group on our left, here's the ethyl group on our right, and at the tetrahedral stereo center, we're going to have a hydroxyl group pointing out or up, and an H group pointing down or back. 
and if we look at the sense of rotation, 1 to 2 to 3, it is indeed S, as it must be given that we assigned S in the Fisher projection above. So hopefully this gives you a sense of how to visualize Fisher projections in three dimensions. This is one topic where a model kit is very, very helpful. This will help you rotate the molecule around and see what a Fisher projection really represents. See what you can do with the Fisher projection without messing with the configurations. For example, you can't just switch H and OH in this central Fisher projection. You can't turn the molecule over really in a Fisher projection. That will change a configuration. Um, things like this, and it will help you see Fisher projections with multiple stereocenters, which if you get into particularly carbohydrate chemistry in your later biochemistry courses is going to start becoming ubiquitous.